that during this conference, we will look at this topic from a, from a different angles, uh, from a di different perspectives, but we, we all discussing the same problem. So I prepared a simple, simple recipe. Everyone can, can start to implement if they want to pr promote, start promoting the, the gender equality uh, inside the company but not to make it uh, really really you know serious and uh, boring i decided that this time uh, i will share three personal stories with you uh just to, you know to, to make it uh, make it less less uh, serious so first story i want to share with you uh, is about the lobster so that's my lobster story so yesterday with my team we actually went kayaking uh I fell out a couple of times. I'm, I'm actually in, in, in a bit of pain, but that, that reminded me about my childhood lobster story. So wh when I was at school, uh, I was 20, 12 years old uh, in Lithuania. That's the country that, that, uh, that I grew up uh, in. In Lithuania, they started selling live lobsters in the supermarkets. It was something around one euro, one and a half dollar at the time. So I went there and I bought one. With, with no intention to cook it, no intention to kill it. But then I, then I was like, you know, looking at that lobster in the, in, the, in the plastic container and thinking, okay, what I should do with it, with it now? I have a lobster, it's live. I don't have an aquarium at home. So I went to the, to the, to the little river, uh, river next, to my, next to my home and I let it go. I just let it go into the river. I set it free. So the next day I'm going to school and I'm seeing around 20 fishermen. That, folks, this is the real story. 20 fishermen around that number is, is, is standing on the shore to that next to that little river. But I never seen them before. So I'm asking them, okay, what folks, what are you doing here? And they say, you know, in this river there are lobsters. So high lobsters. I think uh, in this conference. Uh, we all, all those, those, those magical lobsters that, that we want to show that it, it takes only one to prove that it's worth to look into this, you know, small river. Uh, so that was my first personal story. And I, uh, I would like to go to the agenda. Do we have any comments? Uh, no, not yet. Okay, uh, prob probably let's move, uh, move forward. So hi again, I'm Victoria. I have more than 10 years experience in, in the tech industry. Uh, currently, I'm leading tech marketing team uh, at the Kubernetes uh, management of co cost optimization platform uh, called Cast AI. I joined, the, I joined the company almost at the beginning. So I had the pleasure to build a team from, from, from the ground up. Uh, I was the first hire in marketing. And currently, uh, we achieved the 50-50 uh, gender balance in, in inside the marketing team and before you say that it's easy it's marketing it's not the engineering role i would like to i would like to say no it's not it's extremely difficult uh, if you're working in the industry for example cybersecurity or cloud or any anything that is considered more masculine industry so the, the major issue is, is that the women in themselves don't believe that they can they can go there and do a great work and usually uh, it's, it's a problem of, of uh, not looking into for, for us it's the problem for the organization is not looking for for someone to join in the right places so for example just a few days ago we, we discussed uh, uh, with what one company uh, let's say it's uh, accessories industry that they they cannot find C level executives to join them, although the industry it's 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 uh, it's mainstream. Anyone can work there, woman, man, doesn't matter. Uh, and I asked, you know, the, my question was, how you are looking for the employees? Are you going to the same tech forums? You're going to the same tech communities that are known that they, they are not representing women really well. So how can we hire more diverse team we need to look beyond the look beyond the uh mainstream casual tech channels where where uh, where we see that the biggest representation are from from the from the men perspective 
So I was really, really lucky enough uh, because uh, my colleague, uh, head of HR and co-founder at CastAI, uh, came not from the technical background. So she was always looking for the people for, for their skills around and not only in the tech industry. That's how she helped me to, to, to build that the diverse team. That's, that's one of the most important, important lessons, just to look beyond the, the, the casual channels if you want to have a diverse team. And uh, another thing, uh, we need to reduce biases. Uh, that uh, sounds, sounds easier than done. Than. And sometimes we as women, even ourselves, we have some biases. For example, if the role inside the team is technical, uh, we, we also start to think that, oh, maybe I will not find anyone. So we just need to look at the person as it is without justifying uh, them on the, on, on the gender, but justifying them based on skills. Basic, but sometimes it's harder, harder to do than, than, than said. Um, and let's move forward then to, to the next uh, slide. Uh, by the way, I, I, I promised to share three, three personal stories. So, so I, will, I will still have to, to share. So today's agenda, really quickly, uh, I want to go through the simple recipe of how can you start the diversity program and how to start promote gender equality. And the most important thing, I guess, it's convincing the stale stakeholders. So for example, if you go on the Slack channel and you say, you know, you just post anything on the Slack channel and saying, oh, our company does not do well with, uh, with presenting the diversity. We don't have a diverse team here. It's, it's, the, it's the problem, but you will not achieve anything. Usually you will just uh, ignite the difficult discussion uh, and unnecessary noise. You need to align the ecosystem, the, the sponsor's ecosystem, if you want to start promoting that, that and if you want to start implementing that. So it takes some time of planning, but it's absolutely worth it. So I will, I will share the to-do list uh, later on. Uh, moving forward. Then, uh, this is the, the problem that we all see, but I, I, and we, we are all aware about it. Uh, every, everyone uh, who is probably watching this session is aware about the problem of the glass ceiling we we discussing so often about, but I, I decided to visualize it. And when I visualize it in, in, in this uh, in the slide, it, it I actually felt it. So for example, uh, there is a statement. I believe that women can work in tech. We kind of, you know, moving forward, we, we already solved part of the problem. And a lot of companies, and organizations are actually believe that you are good enough being a woman to work at the tech. Okay, thank God, finally. So then the next step, I believe you can be a team leader. Usually there, there is some, some problems. There is a, there's less women team as a team leaders, but still we, we already convinced, you know, the, the industry that we can be a good team leaders. And the, the, the more high you go, uh, to, through the, the more high you climb through through this scale, the harder it is to achieve uh, something, because in the sea level, the industry, the, the average uh, in the U.S. is we only see twenty percent of women be being in the sea level positions, and it's even less in in a in a certain industries in a certain tech industries that are considered considered to be more, more hardcore, like uh, you know hardware. Cloud, anything that is that that, that requires some something that the that, that, that is uh, understood as super technical. So, and I think that the major major thing is some people still not not believe that women can think strategically, because promoting someone to the to the board, promoting someone to the CAO level, C level means that you believe that someone can think strategically. And I think that's the, the, the one of the biggest gaps inside the, the organizations. We believe that women can have a soft skills. We believe that we they can run teams, that they can take responsibility for KPIs. But that, that step that they can actually own and run a business without so-called, you know, emotions or, or anything around it, it's, it's still not, it's still not, uh, not solved. So to-do list. So 
what, what we should do. By the way, I wanted to share a personal story, really interesting. When I was um, one of the, my first uh, jobs, I was uh, uh, building the books dis distribution uh, platform together with the team in Lithuania. We were really early uh, sim uh, at the same time as uh, 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 at a similar time as Amazon was 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 growing, of course, it's in the Q&A, it's a different different business uh, um, context. Yeah, and uh, I was young, twenty years old. So we hired uh, a man who had zero understanding about the industry, and we rented him a jeep, you know, the, the cool black jeep car. So we were he was always driving. I was sitting at the passenger seat. We are going to the business meetings. I do the talking. I sign the contract. Uh, he smiles, and we go back. And that lasted for a year. Uh, and and I I didn't see any problem. I was again I was 23 years old. I was happy to even have this possibility. But then one of the uh, one of the managers of of of, of the bookstore um, of I don't remember it was a supermarket or or, or what asked uh, asked me. Why are you keep dragging this dude together with you? He does not talk. He does not do business. Why are you keep coming together? And uh, and I just sat there and like I didn't have an answer. So that was my first uh, first uh, uh, understanding that there is something that is called glass ceiling. You know, there is something something really 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 wrong. Uh, so I hope I, I think. I think you all have similar stories, but I just wanted to share. Uh, so agenda. First, the most important part is to identify identify the sponsors uh, inside the inside the organization. So identifying the sponsors, meaning that identifying the network of people who actually cares about the problem, and and and, and if they don't care yet, we need to convince them. And it could not be only the human resources manager or head of human resources. You should involve everyone. You should involve legal. You should involve marketing. And if you can get CEO, if uh, if it's a woman-led organization, maybe it's going to be easier. If it's not, if you can get CEO on the board, then uh, then you can take the CEO together with you and build a sponsors network. And uh, uh, here I prepared some some tips how to convince different stakeholders that it's important to, to include some um, actions in, in, in the roadmap for the next year. So for example, McKinsey did a, did a research uh, a few years ago and they found out that um, the, the, the companies that are more diverse usually are more, more profitable. That's the, that's the cold facts. Also, they found, found, uh, found out that um, both, both companies that uh, are have, have diversity, higher higher ratings of diversity, have higher uh, revenues. So, moving on to the next stakeholder. So, okay, let's assume you convince the CEO of the company because CEO cares about the revenue. CEO cares about his people, but cares about his revenue. Let's not let's not fool ourselves. So, uh, by fooling ourselves, it's business uh, focuses on. Uh, generating revenue. It's not an NGO. So the revenue or or the scale or the or the faster growth. If you promise to the CEO that, that's how you will get the investment into the into the programs. So again, if you need to convince the chief marketing officer or VP of marketing, you don't need to convince me. But uh, I mean, th then you can show them this graph from the Deloitte research that 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 is saying that younger generation cares about the diversity they cares about the brands and how they communicate and how they are um, uh, including the diversity topic in their marketing and this means money again this means uh, uh, faster growth this means bigger revenues this means more relevancy to the to the younger audiences and if you need to convince a uh, public relations manager or human resources manager uh, there are multiple awards uh, now and uh, startup shows and uh, conferences that are looking uh, for the diverse speakers. They are looking for the diverse companies. And that that became uh, that actually adds a score. Is it fair? Of course, it's fair. Of course, it's fair. Otherwise, 
we will keep doing what we're doing uh, and keep getting the same result. So this is your ticket to 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 to, uh, to present your company in 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 that light. So next, uh, so as you see, we 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 convinced CEO, we convinced chief marketing officer, we convinced human resources officer. So what what are we doing now? So we need to set. Uh, KPIs, key performance index, uh, and this is really, really interesting. Mm, this graph, again from the Deloitte research, shows that the companies that are growing faster usually already have those uh, uh, KPIs in place. So you can see the strategic topics here, uh, where uh, what you can measure uh, in terms of diversity. You can measure measure diversity in the hire, hiring objectives, uh, talent retention objectives. You can hire it again in revenues or brand messaging. Uh, and this is really important. And by setting up KPIs and aligning sponsors, there is one, one thing that we keep forgetting. I keep forgetting not only as a, uh, as a diversity promoters, we keep forgetting as professionals, usually. We assume that nothing was done before. That's the uh, most evil assumption you can make about something inside the organization. Meaning that first, uh, when you're going to talk with the stakeholders, you need to ask, what are we doing now to, to promote diversity? How we are including uh, women, people of color, uh, people who, 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 for example, more intra introverts than extra, how are we including them? How, 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 does it, how does it work? And you will, usually you will get, get, the, get the answer. Usually there's something, something is already, already happening especially in the human resources department and marketing, what you need to do, you need to investigate, you need to come up with a plan and you need to agree on the, on, uh, on the improvements on the program. Maybe if it's not, not working, maybe the KPIs are not right. Maybe someone is not, not, maybe it's not included in the marketing roadmap. Maybe it's not included, um, you know, anywhere. It, we, we should, we should uh, make sure it, it is actually, that's what, 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 what I was talking about it is actually included. It is actually added to the OKRs. It is actually added to the product development uh, roadmap. If we, for example, we want to make some changes in the UX uh, uh, for, for, for women or for, for the people who, who have um, uh, weaker vision, uh, anything, you know, uh, and, and that's, that's the, the most important part. So we already discussed that aligning the sponsors uh, investigating what 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 was done, uh, setting the right KPIs, uh, right goals, and communicating the plan back to sponsors and saying, "Hey, we all have an agreement. That's great. Let's let's go do it." That that's uh, the most 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 important things. So instead of instead of thank you, I just want to say, let's let's just start. Thank you. We now have time for the Q and A uh, session. <laughs> yeah, but thank you so much for this fantastic presentation. I particularly like the way you demonstrated how to convince your uh, CMO and how to talk to your HR and PR department. I think it's very useful, especially considering the diversity of their KPIs. <laughs> and then you need to kind of know what the trigger to pull and how to convince them to demonstrate the value because we all care about uh, gender equality who are working in tech, but we want just to make sure that it also aligns with our uh, KPIs. So thank you so much, Victoria, for this great presentation. I did really enjoy it. Thank, let's thank Victoria in the chat. I see people already clapping. It's uh, giving you a round of applause, which is great. Thank you very much. And stay with us for the rest of the event. Stay with us and connect with people. I'm sure many people would want to have one-on-one -on -one also chat with you. So make And sure also we are hiring. We are hiring. <laughs> we need strong executives. We are hiring. We, 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 will, we will do great together. So... Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Thank you Thank very you. much. <laughs> bye bye. bye.